the confidence that you get by being empowered, knowing how to do something, that power is knowledge is so important. And you get a chance to learn the food here if you want to. Welcome to my basement. Welcome to the bicycle room off the back of the basement. Bicycle frames of all sizes, small wheels, racks, and old bicycle frame projects. Electric bicycle is in the back corner. Little kids' bicycles, a mountain bike, recumbent bicycle, a suitcase bike, a tandem recumbent bicycle without the seats, a commuter, a sweet cruiser, and of course it spills out, and a racing wheelchair, and a little tiny girl. Get your start fixing stuff with a humble bicycle, this time on Tech Tip Tuesday. Remember my first tricycle? My first bicycle that I kicked around in the backyard until I could ride it. Then it's seven years old, my little yellow banana seat bike. It was great. But 10th grade, it's the mid 80s, mountain bikes are new, and I, my parents bought me a Univega Alpina Uno. I had to learn how to fix it, so I figured it out. And senior year, then, this is a couple years later, Dad gives me an old Murray, an old road bike, an old 10 speed. He's like, hey, do whatever you want with it. So I stripped it, I painted it, reassembled it. It was built on a bad frame and had bad wheels and bad brakes and it just was junk. But I had done that. But that freshman year in college, I picked up a Raleigh from a thrift shop, a tall bicycle, and I picked up a, a Jeton French racing bike at a yard sale. I stripped them, combined them into one, and made a good road bike. Rode with some friends, met a few friends, two, two other Brian's, so there were the three of us, Brian Cubed, all riding together, great times. Eventually, toward my uh, uh, junior, senior year, I picked up a Cannondale. So I had my mountain bike and I had my Cannondale road bike. I fixed that thing, I adjusted it, rode a couple of races. And when I became a teacher, I decided a few months into this that I'm going to purchase a mountain bike, specialized rock hopper. That thing carried me through so many adventures and so many puddles and so many crashes. Great times. I was trying to fix the thing because I broke something back in 1993 and I was introduced to the best bike shop in the world, Cranix Bike Shop. Hey, my name is Rocky, Cranix Bike Shop, Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. If you have a bicycle and you'd like to work on it, or any other project, we got the space, we have the tools, and I'm here to help. 5003 Penn Avenue in Garfield. Guy who told me to come down here said, dude, you're going to walk in the door and you're just going to start laughing. He's going to have the part you're looking for. And oh boy, is it the best shop. Here it is. Look at all the stuff. It's amazing. Hey. How's it going, Jerry? Good, how are you? Good. <laughs> you were five foot five and looked like Jimmy Sweet. Cricket. <laughs> <laughs> Tires, parts, new and used, everywhere. Yeah. This is the area where you can work on your own bicycles in the back. They provide the tools, they provide the expertise, they provide the work stands. I mean, look at this place. Multiple levels, multiple basements, parts everywhere. Whatever you need, especially old stuff, yeah, yeah, it's all here. A truing stand for your wheels, a frame spreader. One drawer, two drawer, three drawers, four. And look at this. Look at all these parts. Ugh. Once you get to know these guys, get permission to head up the stairs and check out the second and third floors. Find the light switches, forks and wheels and more forks and more wheels. That's all new stuff. And on the third floor, there's a whole bunch of used wheels in this area. Take your pick. This stuff's pretty inexpensive. And then in the very, very front room, top floor, you have tons of rims. It's all pretty well organized. Back to the second floor through the portal. Turn right to get the light switch. This is all the 20-inch wheel. This is all the BMX stuff. Here's my man, Jerry. This is Jerry Cranick, the official former owner of the shop. Congratulations, by the way. And uh, so, so somebody walks into the shop. They want you to fix the bike. What's your answer? You have a choice here. You can go in the back and fix it yourself for free and learn something. Or you can pay to have it done. Or you can pay to have it done and watch to see how easy it is so you'll be empowered to do it yourself. Working on your bike. I wanted a recumbent bicycle. 
But the recumbent bicycles, they were pretty expensive, and I wasn't going to be able to afford it on the money that I wanted to spend on that thing. So I taught myself to braise from a book, bought a torch set. I made various recumbents throughout the years. I took two bikes together and made a tandem. I built a few cruisers. I've got three suitcase bikes, and now it's on to just some interesting kids' bikes, like my single-sided lefty bicycle. With some really simple tools, you can fix them, you can strip them, you can commute, you can race, you can build something that's really interesting. You just learn mechanical skills. It's a really good thing to do. They're cheap. People throw them away. You can steal them from people's basements. So get out there and pedal and check out my bike physics channel for some of my projects that I have made with very limited monetary investment and a whole lot of fun. You have to try. A couple years ago, a young couple came in and were standing across the counter arguing about helmets. The girl was wearing a helmet, but the guy refused to wear one. I would tell them how uh, light they are, how ventilated, and how inexpensive they are. So he tried one on, and he said, yeah, you're right, he said, but I'm not buying one today. And I said, well, that's okay. I said, but if you ever buy one, don't do it for me, do it for yourself. So they left. They came back about two weeks later, and the young girl, she wanted to change tires. She wanted to put a smoother tire on her bike, and she had no idea how to do it. So she bought the tires. She went in the back to learn how to do it. And about a half hour later, somebody helped her through the process. She came back up front. The way she walked up front was completely different than the way she walked in the back. She walked with confidence. So I'm talking to a few guys, and I see her coming up, see her, her tires are on the bike, how confident she is. And I said to her, I said, I have good news for you. She said, what? I said, while you were back there learning how to change your tires, your friend here bought a helmet, thinking that would make her happy because they were, they were really arguing quite a bit the other time. And what she said really surprised me. She said, well, to tell you the truth, I don't really care anymore because I can change my own tires. And oh, we felt so sorry for this guy. And we started laughing, all the guys that were standing <laughs> around. And she said, why are you laughing? And we said, because it proves one of my theories that you girls ride with guys to change your tires for you. And then what she said was, not anymore. <laughs> We felt so sorry for this guy who probably was worth $10 when he walked in and was worth two cents when he walked out. The confidence that you get by being empowered, knowing how to do something, the power is knowledge is so important. And you get a chance to learn the fee here if you want to. You don't force anybody to work on their bikes, but the people who do later are so empowered and so happy that now they know how to do things and it enhances the bike riding experience. Tech Tip Tuesday, working on a bicycle to learn mechanical skills. Thanks for watching Learn Physics and thanks for that thumbs up too, really helps a lot. New videos most academic weeks, subscribe for more. I've even got education ideas, Freaky Physics Friday and Tech Tip Tuesday. And for bicycles, motorcycles, and family adventures, it's my other channel, Bike Physics. You just learned physics.